Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from me, these Time Ball Games. Here we have, it's actually going to be an 8-cast mirror. Two kid on the block, doesn't have any reserve list cards in the deck. Is very powerful. Actually feels, despite not having any reserve list cards, kind of like a vintage deck. It gets to run Moxes, Mox Opal, very strong in the deck, Lotus Petals. And it has all sorts of acceleration, Chalice of the Void coming down. That's going to be a brutal card here. We've already got Urza Saga on board, and that is going to be making 6-6 six, six, and then 7-7 seven, seven constructs as those constructs scale. Additional construct, they just make each other bigger. It's going to be so difficult for Derek to get out of this with this Chalice at 0 on board. Emery shows up. Now, typically that card is great for grinding out value, recurring baubles, eventually being a kind of sylvan library of sorts and then eventually being able to make it so your key threats can be reused cards like kappa cannoneer can be heard from the graveyard memory is just absolutely devastating not here as not much that Derek can do to catch up he's not going to have the acceleration with the opals and petals to make any of this work, this chalice just doing so much heavy lifting. Thought monitor drawing cards, a third Urza saga. Just absolute blowout. Derek can chump block the, the situation we're in. That is it, Derek. Moving on to the next one, hoping to lose the fact that he'll be on the play this time. Worth noting, Derek's hand could have been absolutely fine. He could have had all sorts of zero casting cost cards, but that chalice, just brutal. Now, normally that's going to be coming in at X equals one. So a two casting cost card, shutting off that first rung from most other decks where you're talking about cantrips and cheap threats like Delver of Secrets or Dragon Rage Channeler. Instead, Dallas at zero here comes down after you've had your opportunity to play everything out. And it feels actually very similar to the situation that it was leading to Chalice getting banned in Vintage. There's such diversity in Legacy. I, I don't expect that to happen. But that was the major complaint in Vintage was Chalice at zero was just so brutal in terms of two powered decks playing against each other and whoever had the Chalice just won. They'd be able to play out all of their acceleration and then drop a chalice. So even a draw that could keep up no longer can. Chalice denies all of those zero casting cost spells. Rick leads with an Urza's Saga this time. A bobble. And an opal. Mog has stronger hands so far. Oh, wow. Resting, looping. Mox Opal's there. Kind of moving all in. Using two temporary artifacts. Try and cast a Hull Breacher, which gets Force of Willed. A Hull Breacher would have stopped this bobble from replacing itself. Really the most remarkable card in this matchup. I mean, it's fine. Saying you don't force a will it, but I mean, this hand doesn't even look keepable at this point. It's just a single opal on board. Constructs. Six sixes right now. Seven sevens. This is going to be over next turn. There's a saga just making stuff happen very quickly. And it's a really interesting card, too. I think Urza's Saga, the fact that it's not symmetrical, I think is really interesting. You want to be the better Urza's Saga deck in a matchup. You don't want to be making smaller constructs than your opponent, typically in Legacy at least. Cards kind of cancel each other out for the most part. Like if I have Force of Will and you have Force of Will, 
kind of keeps it even. That's not the case with Urza's Saga. Those constructs are really going to be relevant for the person that has the most artifacts on their side. You have five fives and I have eight eights. I mean, it's absolutely brutal. Granted, the number of Urza Saga also matter. One of them making two bodies. So incredible. It does make me wonder if that's just a, a total oversight. The fact that it makes two, two constructs just seems like they... I don't know. I, this is so powerful. I think the card would have potentially been fine making one construct. Actually, not sure on here. Hmm, that's interesting. A little conversation about whether or not Urza's bobble, if the other player knows which card is seen. That was perhaps in response to the Urza Saga trigger. Construct's getting in there. I can create a little bit of chump blocking, but it is costly, sacrificing two artifacts. But if you cast enough artifacts, up with you. He can make quite a board presence. He certainly contributes to being the, the better construct deck. If Derek can get Urza Saga going fast enough, his constructs will be pretty huge. Temporary speed boost. Let's see what Mog does here. He's got a ton of mana. Hull Breacher. A good answer to Psy. Get stopped again. Psy. Of course, generates tons of tokens, but the other side of that is you can cash out a token that has blocked along with another artifact to draw a card and really just keep things going. Eric doesn't have enough mana to make that play. Otherwise, he would be happy to let that Sithing Needle go, get an extra card in hand. More artifacts he can play, the more turns he's going to have to stabilize. Snaring Bridge. Not loving and Snaring Bridge. Got a Hercules Recall, Force, Force Back. So this likely would have been lethal with the Construct swinging, but Ensnaring Bridge is currently keeping Derek alive. How oh, about the likelihood? I mean, it feels a little bit like a... A pillow fort. I would much rather be on Mog's side of the table here, drawing a couple extra cards and getting that Kappa ready for a lethal strike. We have a Force of Negation. Kappa is the big allure of this deck, getting bigger with every artifact played. Also modifies himself when he enters. Oh, and a quick event here. Expedition map tutors up the new blue channel and everyone's been talking about Basaju. But here we go, bouncing the ensnaring bridge and winning the game. That's really interesting. The fact that Urza's Saga can grab Expedition Map, which can then answer just about any permanent. And this deck is absolutely for real. Blastoise Blastoise lives. 